What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're talking about AWS or Amazon Web Services. Now, this is Amazon's cloud storage company that gets far less attention than its online store, you know, Alexa, Amazon, Echo, Whole Foods, all that stuff they're doing in the mainstream. But this is really the core engine and profit driver of Amazon. And it's a standalone company, in my opinion, could be worth $300 billion and climbing. And it's really just the become the backbone of the modern day internet. So for this episode, I thought it'd be awesome to break down what AWS is, what it does, and what the financials are, and what the valuation is. So AWS uh, got its start in around 2002 or 2003 when Amazon was developing its own web infrastructure to build its own website. Um, and then once they had a meeting, I believe at Jeff Bezos's house, like way back in the day at Amazon, early strategy meeting, they were putting, deciding their core competencies as a brand and a company. And one of them was the web infrastructure they had for their online store. And eventually this slowly and surely led them to creating what became Amazon Web Services formally in 2006 and launching essentially their own back-end uh, website infrastructure to other websites to help them get an online presence going. So this is just in the early days of e-commerce, Amazon was helping all of what now are today the competitors that it destroyed get their own websites off the ground. The real breakthrough for Amazon Web Services is, is you know, it, it brought on the era of the public cloud. Uh, you know, way back in the day when you heard of uh, these tech startups in Silicon Valley that were in a garage, they usually had to have their own server that was running all of the uh, software for their business. And so, you know, buying a server, maintaining it, knowing how to do that, setting it up was costly, was difficult, took space, took time. It was just a huge barrier to entry for building software. And AWS took this idea to, why don't we build something called the public cloud? So we're going to essentially rent a massive warehouse of servers in the middle of nowhere, build all these servers, know exactly how to operate them. And instead of having to buy your own server and operate it yourself, you could just rent one of ours on the cloud. Cloud, it's way easier to do. It's it's way simpler to do. And, and the real thing is, it's it's also you know massively more scalable. It, think about it. If you're a software startup and you're blowing up, and you have one server, and all of a sudden everyone starts using your product, what are you going to do? Buy another server, and then tomorrow nobody's using your product, but you still have the extra server. Like then with Amazon, you can scale to massive capacity almost instantly. Um, you could scale down almost instantly. It really transformed the the barriers to entry and the paradigm of how easy it is to set up and run your own software business. And so AWS from this, you know, original simple but complex to implement product of, of cloud storage, um, you know, has expanded into tons of different verticals. And now the company competes with almost all layers of IT infrastructures. It's so hard to keep up with the amount of innovations that AWS has. I mean, every year they have this massive conference called reInvent in Las Vegas, where they unveil, they have all their customers and they unveil like thousands and thousands of new products and features and whatever. And so uh, Amazon went from going from just rent servers out on the cloud to now basically trying to do everything that IT infrastructure um, would need for this digital era. They also just unveiled this this new chip called the Graviton, which uh, you know all the servers in the cloud are, are, have been running on uh, Intel chips for you know years and years. And now Amazon has decided to come up with its own basic chip to run its servers on. So Amazon is the the, the amount of stuff that AWS is doing to transform um, IT infrastructure and storage is is incredible. Starting to layer on all these features of like, okay, now you have all your data in the cloud. Why don't we help you use machine learning and artificial intelligence to actually extract value from that data or more value. And so that's a value add service that they're selling on top of, of customers. So once you really get locked into the ecosystem of AWS, it sounds like an incredibly, you know, recurring sticky business that you're just constantly paying more and more money to crazy backbone of the internet and infrastructure. So just to give you a flavor of how many people actually use AWS, Kellogg's, uh, Suncorp Bank, you know, Vodafone, Expedia, Dow Jones, Novartis, Condé Nast, Siemens, Adobe, Comcast. I mean, these are huge established companies that use AWS for all types of things, startups, you know, Airbnb, Instacart, Lyft, uh, Workday, Slack, Dropcam, Nextdoor. I mean, the, uh, you know, Netflix uses uh, AWS. Snapchat uses AWS. Like, literally, the modern day internet runs on Amazon. Um, that's not an understatement. I mean, even the public sector, like the FDA, the FINRA, CDC, PBS, USDA, uh, you know, these are companies that are, or these are institutions that all rely on AWS. The AWS was recently uh, given a huge contract by the CIA as well to run their digital infrastructure. This, so this is really the backbone of allowing companies and services and products to go digital. That's what AWS does. And, and it's become just a massive, massive business. And it's, and it's this crazy flywheel because Amazon runs the world's biggest online store, amazon.com. And so they need the best cutting edge technology in the world to be able to, you know, 
optimize their store because it literally is the biggest online store in the world. So it would probably have the best in class infrastructure. And then they take that best in class infrastructure and sell it out to other companies. That's AWS. And when we take a look at the financials of this business, it's absolutely astounding. So in 2003, Amazon started breaking out or was forced to break out the financials of AWS. Um, this is them on a quarterly basis, but every single quarter, I mean, Amazon c continues to grow pretty rapidly. Top line in Q3, they were able to post 46% revenue growth to 6.7 billion in revenue in a single quarter. Earnings from AWS grew 77% to 2.1 billion. So not only is this a, a massive business in scope, I mean, at the current revenue run rate based on Q3 is 27 billion in revenue and 8.4 billion in profit. That's an operating margin of 31%. This is incredibly profitable um, revenue here and it's recurring. Um, and, and if you take a look at how big this beast is and how fast it's growing, I mean, 46%, a $27 billion business growing at 46%. That's insane. A business that's making 8.4 billion in profit per year, that's growing at 77%. I mean, it's, it's I, I just say these numbers because it's like, it's hard for me to almost wrap my head around, um, you know, how big and how quickly growing this business is within Amazon. And if we take a look at as a percentage of Amazon's overall revenue, you can see that in 2018, per my estimates, it's looking like it's going to be almost 11% of Amazon overall, a much bigger portion of their profit. But we're going to get to that more in a sec. But the growth rate is not slowing. This is the quarterly growth levels. Um, it slowed down in the low 40% range there in 2017, but has accelerated a little bit. And there is one interesting trend here before we go into the annual, annual financials of AWS is always cutting prices. This is their business model is like, we're going to make it, uh, you know, this is how much it costs to store this much. Then the next year it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper because they're in a cutthroat competition with Microsoft and Google to get new customers and offer them cheaper uh, storage. And if you think about technology, you know, it's always improving. It's always getting better. It's always getting more efficient. Uh, you know, this is, is, is true for, for what Amazon is doing as well. So every, you know, and they pass these savings along to their customers. So their product gets better and better and more compelling every single year and the and back to the point of this growth chart is the cadence of those price hikes or price decreases um, are what can drive revenue growth massive taking a step back to move on to the annual financials it, it's on track in 2018 to do 25.4 billion 7.2 billion in revenue the growth rates here you can see uh, pretty consistent um, and, and here I took the liberty of extrapolating this out through 2020 so we can get a better handle of the valuation I think these are pretty conservative numbers I mean just uh, I've made an episode valuing AWS at like 150 billion uh, about a year ago. In that episode, I had 2018 profit of 5.5 5 billion was my expectation. Now I'm expecting 2018 profit of 7.2 billion. So they've crushed my estimates. Um, but anyway, this is, so I still think these are conservative. Um, so I have revenue growth scaling down from 45% in 2018 to 38% in 2019 and 35% um, in 2020. And, and this is how I get to AWS becoming a $47.3 billion business with almost $15 billion in profit um, by the year 2020. If we just assume that AWS is worth $300 billion today, let's say, $300 billion divided by $7.2 billion in earnings would be a price EBIT ratio of about 42x. And remember, these earnings are growing way faster than 42x or 42%. They're growing in, in the last quarter 77%. So AWS even if a $300 billion valuation, if they can remotely keep up their growth rate, is trading for a peg less than one. Uh, so $300 billion from that angle may even be too cheap of a valuation. I mean, if you think about it, that they could be generating $15 billion in earnings by 2020. 20 times $15 billion is $300 billion, So they're about 20 times uh, 2020 earnings. So I think there's a couple different ways you could get to a $300 billion number. But that right now is my estimate of just how much this company is actually worth. And if you think about why I'm giving them such a leeway and such high price price sale and, and relatively high price earnings ratio, it's because, I mean, A, this is recurring, A, it's a super sticky business. You're not going to want to get off AWS once you're on it. So I, I think the quality of the earnings and revenue is very high from that regard. But from growth perspective, I mean, we're only getting more and more like immersed in the digital economy. We're only, you know, using our smartphones more. We're only gonna, heading towards worlds of augmented reality. I mean, the more complex interactions we have with the digital world, the more complex digital infrastructure we need, that's a huge margin opportunity for AWS to build more complex solutions on the back end to be able to handle, uh, you know, our continued evolution into the digital world. Amazon's business is only probably even scratching the surface of how big it could get in the long run if they maintain their leadership 
leadership position. I mean, this is what's so scary about AWS and why I really think at its core, AWS could be a trillion dollar company um, in the long run. Because, you know, when a year ago when I valued it, I thought it was 150 billion. Now that looks way too cheap. Now I think it's 300 billion. In three or four years, I'll be saying it's a trillion dollars. And what's even more crazier is how this all ties back to Amazon as a whole. Because Amazon as a whole this year is on track to generate about 11 or 12 billion in earnings. AWS is going to be way more than half of that. So AWS is actually the profit machine that drives Amazon um, and, and allows them to invest in all these crazy moonshots. And, and AWS keeps pumping out more and more. Like soon they're going to be pumping out 10 billion a year and climbing in profit. I mean, that's a ton of money for Amazon to spend on crazy initiatives um, or just subsidizing its own business. Like when we talk about why Amazon is able to offer, you know, sell things for 0% margin, buy Whole Foods, drop all the prices. Um, you know, they have this super unfair advantage because A, their shareholders don't care about profit and B, they have AWS, which is pumping out gushing billions to subsidize whatever they want. And so this is really Amazon's secret weapon here is AWS and this growing cash pile. You know, when Amazon wants to go into India and compete with Walmart and Flipkart and on e-commerce, they have a billion dollar subsidy they can t use with AWS to, to win on pricing, you know? So this is an incredible incredibly interesting lever that Amazon's been pulling to ex expand other areas of its business as well. So from this perspective, I mean, AWS, the backbone of the internet, the, the secret sauce and Amazon's financial arbitrage machine, um, you know, the way that we power our digital lives, it, it, it's, uh, you know, one of the most profitable and fastest growing companies I've ever seen. It's worth 300 billion on its way to a trillion. I think this should be on everybody's radar. Amazon is forced to report out the financials of AWS every quarter because it's such a big piece of their business. So we're lucky that we can keep analyzing it here on HyperChange. Anyway, would love to know what you think in the comments below. What do you think about AWS? Do you use the products? What do you, how would you, how much would you value it at? Um, let me know. Also, huge shout out to the HyperChange Patreon supporters, producers, uh, means a ton. Definitely check out our Patreon page, link in the description. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.